all right then so now what we have to do is to let's create a new project folder so let me open up my bring my file manager over here and i'm going to create a new project folder so choose your workspace and create your own project folder in this case i'm going to create a new project folder over here and name that folder as youtube spotify clone something like this so i'm going to open this in my visual studio code so let me open it up all right here we go let me keep this side by side and let me bring my browser also over here so that i can keep it side by side view and let me make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it clearly so let's open up our terminal so in this case we're going to use the next.js along with the typescript and along with the tailwind css right so search for next.js so you can find their official documentation and click the get started option and click this installation option so that you can find the command to install the next.js so click this and this will copy it and hit it so hit enter right so in this case we're gonna uh, create the tailwind css inside this folder right inside the same subfolder otherwise so what you can do is all we can say clear it and dot slash so that will create the project under the same folder itself right so hit the enter so now it's asking me would you like to use the typescript of course we're going to use the typescript in this project so hit enter and would you like to use aslint yes tailwind css of course yes so would you like to modify the directory source directory by default it will be app if you wish to change it to source you can change it in this case i'm gonna keep it as no itself and would you like to use the app router of course we are going to use the app router not pages so hit yes and would you like to customize the default import alias so we're gonna use the at symbol okay i'm not going to change the default so i'm gonna leave it as no itself all right so this will take some time to get download all the necessary packages and everything so hold tight until it gets successfully installed in our project folder all right then so in this case for me all the files necessary files have been successfully downloaded so let me open up over here and you can see we have the app folder inside the app folder we have the layout.tsx you can see this is the main file and this is the place where everything is being rendered over here and this is the page.tsx this is the content which been loaded initially all right so let's fire it up so i'm just going to say npm run dev so that will fire up our local host in the 3000 port so let me open it over here so local host 3000 all right so it's loading now and here we go so it's fired up properly and it's working perfectly everything is so far so good so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to clean up this code completely so i'm going to delete it everything and then i'm just going to say sfc so we're going to make this as a home home and hit the tab and then type division and here this let's say spotify home page or something so if you are wondering what is that F sfc the term sfc means so basically what we are going to do about what the sfc is it's so that's the uh, extension which comes along with the react snippets so if you search for react snippets hmm, yeah here we go so this is the uh, ES7 Redux React Snippets. This is the one. This is the snippets which you have to install. So please go ahead and install it. So that will help you to create an export functional component. So that will be rendered over here. So you might wonder how the page.tsx is being rendering successfully inside the layout.tsx. Because layout will load it fast and the page will be loaded inside the layout exactly over here as a children okay this is what happening in the next js router over here so for instance let's say if i wish to change the fonts all i have to do is to instead of this enter i'm going to use this poppins right then instead of enter fonts i'm going to change this to poppins over here also poppins let's change this to poppins okay and then change the subset let's use the subset let's use this latin itself 
okay it's not assignable and over here also i'm going to use this pop-ins mm, why we are getting error over here argument of type subsets latin is not okay let's define in this way Mm, mm, mm. what's the mistake over here missing available weight oh, okay so we are missing the available weight so we have to load the other font to wait what are the available weights that we need to load it over here that's what i'm wondering what's the mistake okay so to fix this issue, what we can do is, so let's keep this as Latin itself. So in this case, I'm just going to use the subset as a Latin itself and then comma, and then you need to supply the weight property over here and here array of weights. So you can define the array of weights, whatever the weights that you wish. So 100, 200. So I think this is supposed to be string, comma, 200. That is also supposed to be 200 comma three so maximum i'm going to use this 400 500 600 7 8 and these are the fonts that we are planning to use so save these changes and let's change this pop in fonts over here okay now you can see there are slightly some changes in your font over here and let's change the metadata of our title so let's say spotify clone 2.0 and generated by using created by next.js superbase right something like this all right so now you can say we have the changes in the title name and everything it's been successfully changed all right so we have to maintain this page.tsx in a in a proper way so it's it's better to maintain the the routing in a proper way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new route inside the app folder so make sure if you want to maintain it as a, a root you should wrap it inside a brackets something like this okay then i need to make this as a root folder or a site folder because that will be the default route of this entire application so hit the enter so then i'm going to bring this page.tsx inside the route i'm going to move it inside so save these changes and refresh it still it works perfectly it doesn't make any issues or anything at all so we have the main layout layout and the the main route which is going to be our site route so we don't have to uh, worry about it by default the site route will be triggered and this page.tsx will be rendered inside this layer.tsx all right so now what i have to do is i have to jump into the global.css right so you can see we're having all these things so let's remove all these unnecessary stuff i don't want any of this so i'm going to clean all those stuff deleting it after that what i have to do is so i'm just going to say html and for the body tag body and even for this root everything height of course it's going to be 100 percentage and the color scheme of course it's going to be dark say this changes all right then what i'm going to do is uh, okay we don't need this so don't save over here in the tailwind config.ts so we don't need any of these uh, unnecessary variables over here the background image or anything so let me delete it okay so refresh the changes over here so now you can see everything is being removed then what we have to do is i'm going to load a background image over here I'm gonna load a background image over here so what we can do is um i already shared this image folder in your uh, in the link in the description below so please go ahead and copy it i'm gonna copy this and i'm going inside the public folder 
and I'm going to paste it inside the public folder or I can simply drag and drop it inside over here. All right. So now I have the images, all the necessary images, which is necessary for this project, which is already copied inside the public folder. All right. In this case, I'm going to load the background. So background, I'm going to use the URL object. So double dot slash public slash image slash bg dot jpg and it should not repeat the same image so i'm going to say no repeat and the background position of course it's going to be the center it should load from the exact center and the background size of course it's going to be covered it should cover the entire screen so save this changes now we can see we can see the entire image which has been successfully loaded over here all right so now we successfully over uh, loaded the images and everything then what we have to do we have to go and start design our main layout and that's what we are going to do next all right then so now what we have to do is so we have to make sure the tailwind css is working properly or not so because over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say class name so i'm just going to say text emerald 100 so save this changes and now you can see the color is changed successfully so if you are wondering the bar, I am getting this kind of suggestions and all those things, please go ahead to the extensions and search for Tailwind CSS IntelliSense over here, Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. So this is the thing that we are using. So please go ahead and install it. So, so that will help you to give you give the suggestions for this, uh, the Tailwind CSS suggestions and everything. All right. So save this changes. So in this case, what I'm going to do is, um, we need to create a new project, new folder over here. So I'm gonna, in your root directory, I'm gonna create a new folder called components. So create a new folder called components. And inside here, I'm gonna create our first main component, which is going to be the main container dot TSX. And let's say SFC main container and do main container something like this okay this changes and this is supposed to be a client side component so let's make this as use client we need to make sure this is going to be this it should be the use client and you can see the page.tsx it is, it is the server side component but this it's going to be the the client side component so what we are going to do is so i'm gonna wrap this main container okay so i'm gonna wrap this main container inside our layout let's go to the layout and i'm going to i'm gonna wrap this entire children inside here so main container and let's wrap it over here so now we are getting the type error because we don't know what is the children, what kind of children is going to be rendered inside. So what I need to do is let's get back to the main container over here. And here I'm going to define a new, pro, uh, a new interface over here. Okay. So let's get back to the main container. And what we have to do is we have to create a new interface over here. So what I'm going to do is let's say interface, interface, main container props main container props so this main container props is going to take the children's so this is going to be the children prop children inside here we are going to get the children and the children's are going to be the react node react dot react node all right then i need to supply this kind of the props to this main container so what i'm going to do over here i'm going to extend this with the react react dot fc react.fc which means the function component and which is going to use this main container props and i'm going to expand that children prop inside here all right so now inside this division what we are going to do we are just going to render the children right inside this division we are going to render the children so don't worry we don't we haven't used that yet so let's save these changes now you don't get any much difference over here and you can see we are getting the main container inside which means this main container is acting it, it's loaded inside our layer.tsx now 
what I'm going to do is this main container, it's going to wrap an entire division on the top of this image over here. Okay, so that's what we are going to do now. So this is going to say class name. Okay, so later what we are going to do is this main container is going to get some customized CSS uh, from the uh, from different different components or maybe when the player is been playing, we need to adjust some styles for this main container and everything. So what I'm going to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to bring one more package. So let me install npm install. So search for tailwind merge tailwind merge so this is the one that we are going to use so if you use for what's the purpose of tailwind tailwind tw merge is a javascript library that extends the capability of the tailwind css by providing a convenient way to merge and compose tailwind classes together all right so maybe in the future if you're having a player and all those things if the song is already playing we need to do some customizations in that case we need to change some styles so I'm going to use the Tailwind Merge to combine those customized styles by the time when the player is playing so that we can make some changes in the class, how it's looking and how we want to change it on all those things. So go ahead and copy this and install this. So it's done. So now what I need to do is I need to bring this. So over here, I'm just going to delete this and bring it as an object. I'm going to bring the TW merge from the Tailwind merge. Make sure it is being imported over here. All right, so it's imported. Okay, then this is going to be a function. I'm going to supply the normal strings. So I'm um, let me keep it as a dynamic string literals, and then I need to supply the um, the customized classes and everything. And so far, I'm just going to keep it as an empty. Maybe in the future only we are going to change and all those things over here. I'm just going to say it's going to be the flux and of course height is going to be full and backdrop of course we are going to make it as a medium blur and BG of course we are going to make it black with a 50 percentage of the black color so if you save this changes and if you have checked it out over here if you render it now you can see we having a black blur medium layer on the top of the layer over here and if you check it out our design over here you can see we have three different main subdivisions over here left main and right all right so let's go ahead and create the c3 subdivisions over here this is for left and this is for main and this is for the right so for the left what we are going to do is we're going to create a div and for this i'm going to make this as a main and for this I'm going to make this as a right division for the time being let's keep it as the right itself okay inside this main only we are going to render the children so let's keep it the children inside the main container now uh, we can see we are getting the spotify home page which is coming from our page.tsx over here which has been successfully rendered inside the main container and we are getting the data over here right so now this left section how the left section is going to look like like this we need to bring the logo and we need to create a reusable division to render all these things so let's go ahead and do that stuff first now so for this i'm just going to say class name class name flex type full and flex everything is going to be the column direction and the backdrop it's going to be s which means small save this changes okay now inside this divisions inside this division I need to bring so div class name this is for that logo so of course it's going to take the width as 100 percentage width flex item center and gap between is going to be 3 px it's going to be 4 py it's going to be 6 and inside here I need to bring that icon and as well as the logo so for that icon we are going to use the react icon so npm install react icons hit the enter so that will download the react icons then i'm going to bring for spotify icon from fsx and make sure the custom packages are installed okay imported on the top paragraph tag i'm going to say spotify save the changes now you can see we have the spotify um that uh, icon and as well as the Spotify text, right? 
So now for this Spotify, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say class name, class name, text for Excel. That's the size. That's how it looks. And for this paragraph, I'm just going to say this is supposed to be hidden for our mobile screen. This is supposed to be hidden, right? And then from, from the medium device onwards, it should be displayed black. It, it should be displayed again. So I'm just going to say as a block, right? Then the text size, it's going to be text Excel and the font, of course, it's going to be the semi bold. All right. Now that's how it looks fine. And then what we have to do is, um, All right, so now next what we need to do is, so I'm gonna create, I'm gonna bring all these menus over here, right? So to bring that, so let's create a structure for it. So this is the place where we are finishing the logo, right? This is the place where we finish the logo and this is the place where we need to render the routes. Routes, all right? For this, I'm gonna create a division. For that, I'm just going to say class and this is supposed to be hidden on the mobile screens, right? Then from the medium devices onwards, this is supposed to be flex and flex column and gap Y, it's going to be two. And width, of course, it's going to be the custom width. It's going to be 300 pixels. And then height, of course, it's going to be full. So let's make this gap properly. Save these changes. And now you can see we have the we have the adjustment over here for 300 pixels. You can see we have some adjustments over there, right? Then um, what we can do is mm, 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 mm. over here. Now what we need to do is we need to create. Um, one more custom component which is going to render uh, some children's inside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more custom component over here. Let's say I'm going to create a new component called box.tsx and here um, SFC I'm going to make this as a box and div inside so far it's going to be the box so far. Then I'm going to create an interface. So interface, just like the main container, we are going to make a box props for this. And then this is going to bring the children, which is going to be the react dot react node comma. And it's going to have one more property called class name, which is going to be the custom class name. And it's going to be the type of string. Okay. Then I'm going to extend this prop over here, react dot FC and supply the box prop and spread out the children prop and as well as the class name over here. All right. For this, I'm just going to use the class name and I'm going to use the TW merge from the Tailwind merge as a function. And I'm going to supply the CSS and I'm going to supply the class name, which we are going to receive for the customized class name, which whenever we are trying to supply for the division, right? So over here, I'm just going to say height is going to be fit. It should always fit the content and width, it should always full. And inside this, instead of this box, I'm just going to render the children, right? Save these changes. Now for this main container, inside the main container, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a box like this, all right? So inside this box, now this box is expecting some children inside in it. It's saying children is missing. So I'm just going to say, um, let's say custom routes or something. Custom routes, save these changes. Now you can see we are getting the custom routes. So now even if I, when, if I want to create multiple divisions over here, now you can see I have the multiple divisions over here. So this is how you can create a uh, customized and uh, reusable code over here. So let me leave it as a box itself. Now inside this box, I'm going to create a division div all right and that div is going to have a class name okay and that is going to be flux and flux column and gap it's going to be four and py it's going to be four and px also it's going to be four 
and this is the place where we are going to render all our custom routes so to do that we have to create ourselves our custom routes so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create our custom routes over here so i'm just going to say const routes equals to we're going to use the use memo so use memo is a hook it's a hook if you search for the purpose of the use memo over here you can see Use memo is one of the built-in hooks provided by the React. It's used for the memorization, which is an optimization technique to improve the performance of the React component. So we need to make sure the routes are being memorized for the very first time whenever the website is being loaded, right? So use memo. It's going to be a callback. Okay, like this. And we need to supply the dependency. Okay, inside this array of objects, I'm going to supply the route one after another. So the first route, it's going to be, so we need the icon of that route icon, which is going to be far home. Home from the, so import that, then the label of this, it's going to be home. That's a prop which we are creating. And if it is active, so it's going to be. So we need to get the path name, right? So we need the current path name. So to access the current path name, what I need to do is right after here, const path name, which is equals to use path name, which is the hook, which is coming from next navigation. So make sure it's been um, implemented from the next navigation. Okay, so one second. So it should come from the next navigation, not apart from that and make it as a bracket over here then using that path name if that path name if the path name is equals to if it is equals to an empty string it should be active so href the the route for that is going to be the slash that's the home route because that's a home then the second object we are going to create the second object so i'm going to enter and i'm going to copy the same stuff from here and I'm going to paste it over here. This is going to be for search. And this is going to be search route. And if the path name is equals to equals to search, then it should be active. So here, href is going to be search. So make sure this and this are both are same. Then I'm going to create one more object over here. Paste it. We need the favorites. So I'm going to create the favorites route over here. Mm. for this i'm gonna say for heart heart imported and this is going to be the favorites and this should be equals to favorites route and here also it should be the favorites route all right and these are the routes that we needed so save these changes Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to render all these routes inside this division over here. That's the place where we need to, and this should be rendered every time whenever the path name is being constantly changing. So dependency check, we need to check this path name constantly. So now we need to use this route inside and we need to render it over here. This is the place. So I'm gonna say routes dot map open it. I'm going to get a one by one item in it and I'm going to render. Okay, so we need to render another sub component. So let's go ahead and create this another sub component called site, which is going to be that sidebar item. So let's say sidebar item, which we haven't created it yet. Okay, so I'm going to get supply the key. So the key, which means it should be maintained uniquely. So item dot label that is going to be the a key and we need to spread out all the property which we are getting for that particular item so save these changes of course you will get an error over here which the sidebar item is not defined so because we haven't defined it yet so copy this and let's go here and create a new component over here dot tsx and sfc paste it here and let's paste it at sidebar and let's bring that sidebar over here save these changes and now you should get the sidebar item again and again and again over here. All right. So now all we have to do is to go ahead and customize the sidebar item over there. All right then.
So next, what we need to do is now we have our sidebar item over here. So let's get back to the sidebar item. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a sidebar uh, props over here. So I'm going to create an interface and let's say sidebar item props, open it. So what are the props that we are going to get inside? So we need to bring the icon and we need to get the that whether the route is active or not and we need to get the label and we need to get the route url so these are the four different properties that we need to get inside so first we need to get the icon icon and of course that is going to be the icon type so you can see we have a object called icon type which is coming from the react icon so make sure because we are getting an icon as a reference over here in this property so make sure that you are using this okay and it should come from the react icons then we are getting the label so label which is going to be a string type then we need to give the active this is an optional prop boolean so if you're not mentioning this this will uh, this component will understand that this property is a compulsory property you should send it and we need to make this an optional because not every route is going to be active at the same time right so we need to make it as an optional then href colon string href we should send it so you can use either comma or semicolon so make sure that you're using any one don't use mix uh, don't use both of them together right now we need to extend it over here so let's say react dot functional component and open the angular brackets and send your sidebar item props inside and get all your icon so i need to keep the component in a capital letter right so i'm gonna create a alias name for that icon prop as icon i as a capital then i'm gonna get the label then I'm going to get the active prop. Then I'm going to get the href prop. Save these changes. Now we have all the properties which is necessary. Then what I'm going to do is this needs to navigate every time whenever I'm clicking it. So I'm going to bring return. I'm going to bring a link tag link. Okay. This link is coming from next link. Make sure that it's been imported properly. Next link. And let me bring this next link over here. Or something like this. And this need, this link needs the href. So I'm going to pass the href prop, which we already have. Then I'm going to use the class name. Class name. Okay. We need, um, so we need to change these, um, the class name based on the actives. If it is active, we need to do it in different, different colors, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this as a dynamic string literals over here because we need to change the color. So which is going to be flux height of course it's going to be auto and item everything should be in the center and width of course it's good shade the complete width and gap x it's going to be four and the text color is going to be neutral 400 something like this then let me enable the word wrap neutral 400 then font should be medium and the cursor should be the pointer and transitions everything should happen smoothly and the time when I'm hovering it, text color should be in the white color, right? And padding on the top and bottom, I'm going to make this as one. Then position, of course, it's going to be the relative position. Because you can see if it is an active, you can see we need to bring this absolute color over here, right? That's the reason. Like an indication mark that this is, route is completely active. All right. So if it is active, which means what I'm going to do is... Um, um mm, 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 mm. so what we can do is instead of checking uh, so what we need to do is usually if it is an active what we have to do we have to bring this placeholder and we need to check if it is active then we need to use this ampersand symbol then we used to write if it is an active what we do we used to write the text white something like this if you don't want to follow this the one more easiest way is to do is to just cut this thing completely from here and use this TW merge all right and supply your classes then what we have to do is you have to open this one more and here you need to check the active if it is active is true then you need to type your custom string over here text white this is it how cool is that now inside this link tag we need to bring a division and this division is going to have a class name and we're going to use the TW merge open it 
and here i'm just going to say um, this route is for that uh, what is it for that uh, that active green color this division is for this active green color for this so over here i'm just going to say by default it should be hidden okay hidden and absolute and it should be on top zero and bottom zero okay height of course it should be full width is going to be two and rounded it should be rounded and i need to keep it on the two pixels by default rounded means four pixels but i need to keep it as a two pixels and bg color is going to be emerald 500 okay and transitions should happen smoothly so transition and ease in out okay and it should be if it is active if it is active then i need to display it so block okay then i need to display the icon we need to display the icon icon and size of the icon is going to be 20 and here paragraph for this i need to display the label of the trout so label save these changes and now you can see we having all the routes and everything which is being displayed over here and currently you can see the home route is looking in different color because the search are, are not the active route so that's the reason they are not showing so if i click search okay now we are in the search and you can see the page not found because we don't have that page and you can see we are inside the search so the search page is active if i click the home the home page is active right so we are getting everything is working perfectly as we expected so this is this should be hidden and the medium device it should be block block and truncate of course we need to truncate any unwanted white spaces which means uh if if the size is beyond that it we need to uh, we, we need to add some uh like dot 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 something like that right if the space is not enough to display the complete route name so width it should be full right save the changes and we need to fix this active route so what i'm going to do is so i need to move this towards the left side of the screen so minus left five save it and now you can see the active route is being pushed to the left side corner and now if i bring it to the mobile screen you can't see anything but from the big screen i can see it right so let's go ahead and fix the mobile screen view over here so we need to we need to do something for the mobile screen we, let's do that now okay so let's get back to the main container that's the place where we are having this division and this is the place where we are hiding it on the mobile screen and bringing back on the medium screen right so this is for the medium screens and now let's write the division for the mobile screen and it will be hidden on the medium screen so let's create one more div over here okay and instead of keeping it as a division hmm okay let's keep it as a division itself so over here class name flex and medium device it should be hidden okay and transition everything should be smooth flex column direction item center and justify it center enter okay and here i'm gonna bring one more box layout inside here i'm gonna create a div class name flex flex column gap y uh, it's going to be 4 padding y it's going to be 4 and px it's also going to be 4 inside here i'm gonna bring the same thing copy it and i'm gonna paste it over here save this changes all right now you can see this is how it looks all right if you click the search search will be active if you click the home home will be active so everything is working as it's as uh, like how we are expecting it so now we successfully finished the left sidebar the sidebar content right all right and then let's go ahead and do the same thing for the right bar content that's what we need to do next all right so now let's go ahead and start designing this right bar over here and you can see inside the right bar also we having a different different components over here so we need to make sure that right bar as um 
you should accept the different child nodes inside that right board component right so let's go ahead and design the right board component all right so before that make sure uh, your sidebar component or uh, the main container it should be a client so just like the same way we need to bring our we need to bring our right board as well as as a client component because so you might wonder why we are not using the used client for the box and all those things because this is the components which is going to render a react node inside None of that, the remaining components are not going to render a React component inside of it, right? So, and this is the component which is going to be rendered on the server component, okay? Over here, um, in the layout.css, So that's the reason we need to make sure, we, uh, to avoid the hydration error, we need to make sure which is going to be the client and which is going to be the server component, you need to mention it properly right otherwise you will definitely run into one hydration error okay so now let's go ahead and create a one more component over here and i'm going to name this as a right bar dot tsx oops and here sfc right bar and create it as a right bar save the changes and i'm going to make this as the use plan. save the changes and let me open the main container and instead of this i'm gonna bring the right bar save the changes okay now we are getting the right bar and you should see the right bar is very close to our main container. So what you have to do is we have to push this right bar all the way to the right side. So to, in order to do that, what you have to do is I need to make sure this main class should occupy in the, all the available space in between it. So flex one. So this will push this to all the way to the right side and overflow way. Of course, it's going to be auto and padding top and bottom is going to be six. Okay. So okay so now let's get back into the right bar which we have created over here and over here i need to create a property interface right bar props and it's going to take the children and that is going to be the react dot react node and we need to bring it over here so let's say react dot functional component and let's bring that right bar props and let's bring the children prop over here and inside this instead of this right prop i need to render those children nodes inside of it save this changes and now here we will get the error because we don't have any children in it for inside this this is the place only we need to render this button and we need to bring this different navigation options and also we need to bring this one more option to make sure that the user can go pro by subscribing to our uh, website right so for the time being i'm just going to say right bar so to avoid the type errors i'm just going to keep it as a right bar itself now we can see the right bar has been rendered rendered over there so let's write some styles for this class name flex of course it's going to be flex column everything should be in the center and padding of course it's going to be px4 and px py it's going to be six width of course it's going to be 20 and gap it's going to be six save this changes okay and now you can see we're having some gap over there okay we're having the width and we're having some specific gap over here okay so so far you don't see the color because we are not having any specific color in between in it if you want to check those color house what is the size of it you can add some color over here pg red or something okay you can see this is how it looks the layout this is how the layout should look like so i'm just going to remove this and let the right bar it's been so far done so we are not going to do anything in the right bar after this okay inside the right bar only later we are going to do some uh make some customized changes inside the right bar and everything because inside this right bar only we are going to render a customized custom design button and the navigation options and everything and that's what we are going to do next
All right then, so let's start customizing the right bar container over here. So inside this right bar, as we have a look over here, we need to bring this user button and we need to bring this artist and these kinds of different buttons over here, right? So let's go ahead and bring all those options inside the right bar container. Where is our, let's get inside the main and this is the place. And this is the place where we need to bring our user profile section. And admin actions and this is for premium users right these are the things that we need to bring inside our right bar so so over here i'm going to create a design so basically this login actions so if we have the user object we need to display the user profile or else we need to bring this uh, user button so where the user can click and login authenticate himself to authenticate inside our website right so over here, so let's create a div. I'm just going to create a design. Later we can customize those design according to the objects what we have in our hand. So class name, I'm going to make this width as 12 and height as 12 and it should be rounded full and BG neutral, BG neutral, oops, neutral 400 or something. It's better 600. It's just anyways, it's just a background color. So cursor pointer and flux, everything inside this, it should be flux item center, justify center and the position it's going to be the relative position. Relative, it should be relative. So keep it in mind, it should be relative. Now you can see we have the a nice circle where we can display the profile image of the user inside this divisions. Inside this division only, we need to bring the image of the user image of the authenticated user or the first letter not every user will have themselves a profile picture so it's better to keep their first letter as the um, profile picture now if the user is not there then what we need to do we need to bring a button which is going to display like this so the user can authenticate himself to uh, get into our website so i'm going to create this button as a button component and it should be a reusable component, right? Because in later in our project, we need to use the button component quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button. This is a component which we don't have yet. So let me create a new component inside here. Button.psx sfc and let's create a button and let's keep it as a div and let's keep it as a button. And let me go here and let me import that button where it is here it is now let's import it now we can see we have the text as over there as a button right so now <clears throat> we need to go and start customizing the <clears throat> the button classes right so basically this button is not going to be a just like any other reusable components which we created so far basically this button is going to have all the inbuilt um properties which we are using for our default html button element right just like the same way we need to create this component as a reusable and as the same way you should have all the default properties for button so to do that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create an interface let's keep it as a button props button props it should extends react dot button html attributes and it should take the type as HTML button elements like this. Then open and close the empty object. Let me make it a big screen so that you can see. All right. Okay. So now what I need to do is after this button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, <clears throat> I'm going to delete all these things. We don't need this. I'm going to delete this. Okay, so I'm going to create a forward ref. So keep in mind forward reference, it's coming from the React package, make sure that it's coming from there. Then supply the type. Type is of course, it's going to be the HTML button element. And for that, we're gonna bypass this props which we created. So make sure that you added the comma over there, right? Then open the bracket. Okay, so here now what we need to do is I need to call a callback function, right? 
we need to call a call that function and inside this function of course this is going to be an object and as well as this is going to pass a reference okay so over here now what we need to do is for this we need to get the class name property and all right so we need to extend the properties default properties like class name then we need to get the children properties then we need to get the disabled the button needs to be disabled until certain action is done then type of course we're going to keep the type as button by default button and at the end we need to get all the remaining properties props we need to get all the default props from that all right mm. and then inside here we need to return return okay now we need to return what uh, we need to return a default button okay we need to return a default button inside this button we need to render the children whatever we are sending it from the front over there and we need to get all the by default we need to get the type as type then we need to get the class name and i'm going to use the the tailwind merge function and i'm going to supply the default classes for this of course width is going to be full rounded it's going to be medium and bg emerald 500 and it's need to have border and border um i think we don't need border so let's remove the border and px it's going to be three three um then let's keep it border but we don't need to give the color by default later we can uh, just to give the border color we can do some customizations if we need the border alone then py is going to be three and disabled on disabled um we should not allow the cursor so cursor not allowed okay i written padding two times okay and after that and on disable button opacity should be 50 percentage that's how the button opacity should be then font should be bold uh, text should be black by default on hover opacity should be 75 percentage and the transitions all should be smooth so these are the default styles and along with that we need to customize we need to override with our own custom classes whenever we are using it right <coughs> and by default the button display name is going to be button dot display name it's going to be button this is how whenever you are using the button component this is how it, it's going to display the button name okay so save this changes all right now you can see we have the button alone okay Mm, I think we do have some button border by default. Uh, what I'm going to do is I don't need any outline, so let me keep the outline. And by default, the border trans border should be transparent. Yeah, that's how it looks. All right. Now you can see we have a nice button over there. For that, then let's go to our main container back over here. We have the button alone, so I'm just going to bring instead of keeping this button as a self-closing tag. I'm going to supply some content inside here, right? <coughs> mm, what we can do, um, this is supposed to be a user button. If the user is not there, we need to get the user, right? So I'm going to bring the icon as for user from the React font awesome icons. Then the size of the icon is going to be 20 and the class name is going to be Mm, text black save the changes that's how it looks okay all right now the button is looking good next um we need to bring the icons for the admin actions right we need to bring the icon for the artist and for the songs so here i'm going to make sure this href is equal to slash artist this is the route whenever i'm clicking it it should be navigate then class name um, bg it's going to be transparent and px it's going to be two py it's going to be two 
and inside this link tag i'm going to bring five users from power toss of six let's copy this and then let's change the name users and the text color it's going to be neutral neutral 400 and the text is going to be um, 2 excel save this changes that's how it looks and let's copy this and paste it on more time this is going to be ps music note note list i think so yes bs music note list and this is going to be the socks save the changes that's how it looks and at the end we need to bring one more option that's for the subscription if the user is already subscribed then we need to display a different subscription option if the user haven't subscribed yet we need to display this option like gopro the user needs to um, uh, subscribe himself to get to listen to the music ad free music in our website right so let's go ahead over here i'm going to create a div class name and that is going to be flex flex column and everything should be in the item center and justify it in the center and gap y it's going to be true and margin top it's going to be autumn which means from the top it should be automatically pushed to the bottom of the screen then the position is going to be the relative enter inside here i'm going to bring <coughs> um gi imperial crown this one this is the icon that i'm looking for then size of the icon is going to be 24 then class name it's going to be text to white all right then inside here i'm going to create a paragraph and I'm going to say go and inside here I'm going to bring one more para span tag then I'm going to say pro go pro something like that so that should bring the icons over here you can see that let's go ahead and customize this paragraph tag so this it should wrap the white space white space should not wrap automatically to the next line so remove the white space no wrap text neutral 400 and the font it's going to be the normal and text is going to be the lg and for the span tag class name um text is going to be the white save these changes and now you can see automatically it's displaying like gopro option right so now we have all the necessary elements inside our right bar all right so we have all the necessary elements in the right container then all we have to do is to go ahead and start doing the authentications along with the super base and all those things then we can move on to the next thing, next chapter.